السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كان يهرني بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه وعلى آله تم الصلاة والتسليم من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله My dear sisters and brothers with the ongoing genocide in Gaza and with the all sad images and the sounds that fills our social medias and with our confusion with, uh, on knowing what to do and what should we, how we should we act and react. I decided to remain on this topic of like, um, to be the topic of, spirit, of activism, but I wanted to focus on more calm inner uh, part of activism, and that is the spiritual activism, which I think it's more important than anything else we can do right now to improve our own circumstances and the uh, uh, Islamic and the Ummah circumstances in the, in the rest of the world. There is no inherent disconnect or contradiction between Islamic spirituality and social or political activism. In fact, Islamic spirituality is not only relevant but essential to all forms of activism. Islam provides a view of human reality that is cognate, holistic, and practical. This view, this view is always sensitive to both constant and changing needs of the human experience. It is from the remarkable and miraculous beauty of Islam that all elements of the human identity are fused together seamlessly. The spiritual heart with its need for timeless truth and values, the intellect with its need to uh, conceive and chart course for a life of freedom and happiness, the senses and lim limbs with their energetic need to do, to affect, to change, all have their place. Heartless spirituality, runaway, runaway reason and barren action have no place in Islam. Allah says, والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر By the passage of the time, surely mankind is in loss, except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to the truth and advised each other to patience. The seat of belief is the heart. The heart is the locus of normative perception, experience, and will. It is the fire of belief that sparks all movement and action. The overflow of belief with its normative ordering in our world, the experience of the, div the divine oneness, Tawheed, and the desire <clears throat> and the desire uh, and resolution uh, and res resolution generated by this gives birth to action. That action, the work of goodness, is the emotional and physical manifestation of the Tawheed and its value of justice, equity, kindness and moderation, love and generosity. This work for, is first manifested, manifested within me, within the person, within me in my worship, in my relationships. If I do not change, I cannot be an agent of meaningful change in others and the world around me. 
this goodness, if true, must rebel outwards, touching my most intimate circles, and then further to affect my environment, family, neighborhood, and community, the, the social, economic, and political. One seeks to impact their surrounding for the better. For you are one thread uh, in the social fabric. You need and are needed. You affect and are affected. Each of us is a key in the door of another. And thus, I console too with and for truth and the values it it engenders because it is essential aspect of the divine majesty, al Jalal. And I console too with and for patience and the value of uh, it engenders because it's the essential aspect of the divine beauty, al Jalal. At every level, we cannot conceive of spirituality that does not necessitate action. We cannot fathom action uh, without spirituality. The relationship is integral. Our faith is unity of belief of Iman, the action of Islam, and the spiritual excellence, excellence of Ihsan. This is how we are meant to live, in active spirituality and spiritual action, subhanAllah. Any, found, any foundational understanding of Islamic spirituality begins with the discussion of the heart, the qalb. The heart, qalb, is our most precious gift from the divine, subhanahu wa <clears throat> It is the fountainhead of our spirituality. The heart is the locus of all our uh, normative uh, conjunction and judgment, right and wrong, ethical and unethical, good and evil. Also the heart is the seat of emotional experience. We feel love, hate, hope, fear, gratitude, and so on through the heart. A third thing about the heart is the reservoir of our will and resolve and striving. So the heart, the qalb, was created to grace us with opportunity to connect with Allah, the divine, the infinite in majesty and beauty. Through the heart, we are able to know the divine, experience the divine, and desire to, to seek the divine. And since Allah is the source of all virtue, the heart, the qalb, is the canvas by which we perceive the virtue, experience it, and strive to actualize it. These three functions of the qalb, of the heart, illustri illustri illustrate its primacy in every endeavor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's not the eyes that are blind, but the heart in the chest. And the Rasul والسلام, <clears throat> told us about an organ, the heart, which if rectified, the entire body would be rectified, and which if corrected, the entire body will be corrected. The first link between spirituality and activism should now be obvious. It is the, the spiritual heart that is the birthplace of all the words, words, deeds, and all activism. If our hearts are clouded, veiled, and obscured from Allah, how we will know the virtue and vice? In a world where virtue and vice is often inverted, where vice is frankly ribbon and wrapped in attractive uh, grab of virtue. How will, how will our heart find inner tranquility and connect uh, to the divine in the midst of the struggle and the strivings? And how 
we will find our resolve and inner strength to act to act ethically and virtuously in the face of the pressure uh, of the pressures and challenges we will not be able to stand whole and true we will shatter from within a heart that is distanced from the divine will perceive truth as falsity and falsely falsity as truth as a consequence it will incline not to justice but to obvious and subtle injustice thus thus it will become anxious and fearful in times of difficulties and will lose its resolve and steadfastness in the face of temptation if our hearts are not connected to the divine our activism will be unhinged normatively spiritually and practically as a well-known muslim activist once recently said all this work and i feel spiritually dry and unveiled within we must individually come to term with um the the terms that me in the mirror or like how we see our nets our ego come to terms with what what it wants and their desires and what we must rectify uh, if need to be in order to affect any sort of change in this world when i proclaim when i proclaim i love or i want or i i know or i believe what component of my complex identity is speaking what is the spiritual psycho psychology psychological process that produces my value statements emotional affirmation and the alignment of my will who is the i in in the me who is the me in the matter the human identity is compound reality there are other elements beyond the heart the qalb that constitute the human identity the most cri critical to examine for the purpose of understanding the spirituality of activ activism is the uh, ego the lower nafs the lower self the nafs or the lower self is that human faculty that is connected with the pursuit of either uh, carnal desires the shahwa or the intellectual uh, capers the hawa the lower self nafs is the seat of uh, all our ego, 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 egotistic uh, uh, potentiality it is the locus of uh, the legal responsibility before allah before the divine without the lower nafs we would be angelic after a careful analysis the primary in the primary text the scholars have divided the realities of the lower selves into four and that and they are one the cattle like animal self the lower self nafs that find its ultimate pleasure in materi materialistic pursuits of eating drinking entertainment or sexual pleasure the second one is uh, the predatory self the lower self that finds its uh, satisfaction in hegemony over other through the through violence or aggression the third one is the satanic or the devil like the shaitani nafs that is achieve its happiness uh, through like arrogance duplicity and so on the angelic self is the lower self that finds its con uh, contentment in the remembrance and worship of allah these four attributes are what constitute my inner reality my inner image my inner character my lower self my nafs is either one of these or uh a uh, part of of these four nafses for example i can i could be part of like cow like or part of satanic and part angelic 
the type of lower nafs that I have is a consequence of my life's life choices and my life my life's action. I have molded myself uh, in them. I can I can uh, control my lower self by the pursuit of a, of its uh, pleasures and diligence. Without an understanding of my self, of my nafs, of my lower self, which is the reality of my inner character, I will never be able to truly understand myself, how I perceive the world, my thoughts and my feelings, what, why I want what I want, my action, my reaction. And without this knowledge, I will not be able to begin the transformation in myself in my word, both within and without. To identify my politics, I must first discern the reality of my desires and impulses, aims and action. For it's my or your essence is a, is, is function of these things. Then underline the reality or the nature of myself that must be known. <clears throat> Who I am in essence is really a function of my impulses, aims and action. It is my essence that defines my politics, my lower self, either one of combination of like four, the, of the four realities, the cow, nafs, the wild dog, the devil, or the angelic, malik. When my energies and drives are primar primarily directed uh, to hed hedonistic pleasures, my lower self is cow-like. When they are directed by hegemony of hurt and violence over others, I am like wild dog nuts. And when, I, when they are directed in duplicity and arrogance, I am like in the shaitaniness, the devilship. The devils. However, when they are devoted to the pursuit of the divine, I am angelic. Many profound implications arise from this from this self acknowledgement, and my perception of the environment around me, the value I seek, the activism I employ, and my action, and my re reactions are all conditioned by my inner realities. My change will require a constant and sincere effort for my heart, for my hull, to truly be free in its perception, experience, and will. It must be free from the impact and the grip of the lowerness, and free of my lower self from the kettle-like, predatory, and satanic uh, nafses. But it's not an easy task. It's, it's a necessarily undertaking for without the creation of an angelic lower self, the qalb, will always be a prisoner of the lower self, limited, to, limited in its perception and suffocated from the experience of Allah, of the divine and the divine values. It is only through the purification of the lower self that the heart will attain its freedom and true happiness in attachment to the divine. And this is precisely the subject and quest of the Islamic spirituality. This is precisely is what needed for activism of any kind of, or any sort. <clears throat> this being said, I, I feel that what's happening in Gaza is really in, uh, important and an opportunity for us to go inward and to check our heart and to change ourselves before changing anything. Uh, this is the khutbah of today and I ask Allah to instill in, in us a genuine devo devotion to uh, transcend our superficial and illuminate our intentions with pure light of the faith 
And um, I would ask from you to pray for the people in Palestine and make dua at least in every in every salah in the five prayers. And Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa